everyone, Jillian from A Jillian Advanced Design here, and today I have a really cool technique that we're going to do, and this is using the Wendy Vici Studio 490 embossing paste, and then we're also going to use Catherine Fuller inks, and so here are just some examples of um, ones that I've done with different cover plates of mine. Cut out the cover plate and make it a stencil, and then I just play around. You're going to need your embossing paste and you're going to need some palette knives, something borrowed, Catherine Fuller ink, and then you're going to need some tape. And then you're also going to need one of my cover plates. So I'm using the mermaid scales and I'm just going to tape this down to make sure it stays in place. You don't necessarily need that much tape, but I went there. <laughs> So then you're going to scoop out a little bit of paste and it's okay if you overestimate how much you're going to you're going to need or if you underestimate because you can always add to it. Just taking another knife and just kind of getting the excess off, getting as much product as I possibly can. And then I'm going to just put my something borrowed on my craft mat, just smush it down. And then I'm going to just start mixing. So you just want to put your paste in the ink and just move it around. I'm going really fast here because it is quite a long process um, and you know it, ta it takes a hot minute to to mix it up to get the color you desire. It's kind of like mixing icing like when you're making cake. Um, so definitely takes a little while. Um, you know you're gonna have to add more ink which I believe I do later in this um, process. If you want a darker color um, and you want to make sure it's all blended nicely and not streaky. So that's why I'm taking so much time just to make sure that I get it perfect. All right, and then I'm gonna get some onto my knife, and then I'm just going to go ahead and just move it across my paper. I'm using downstrokes, so you wanna make sure that you're using downstrokes as well for the whole, whole thing. And you don't wanna go too hard, you don't wanna press too hard, because then you get little areas, little holes, as you can kind of see. Um, so I'm just going to go over top of that then. So you can use as much or as little product as you want, but you're going to have, um, I like to get mine covered. And also you can reuse these stencils. You don't have to cut it, a new one out every single time you're trying to do this technique. So I'm just kind of smoothing it out and refining it. And then I'm going to take my tape off. And you can also reuse the tape. And I believe this is just like post-it tape, so anything works, truly. And then you can go ahead and take your stencil off. And then you've got this really beautiful raised embossed background and I'm just I'm obsessed with this technique it's just so much fun so as you can see it's raised and it's just so cool like I it's so much fun I could do it all day I could mix different colors and play and also you can save your paste and put it in a little container So for this portion of the video, I'm going to be showing you guys a quick card and I, which is what you've probably been waiting for, but I wanted to show the technique first, just so you guys knew, could follow along, could kind of understand. So this is the card we're going to be making and I haven't glued it down yet. So I'm trying to take a mental picture in my mind of it because I'm going to show you guys like the background and stuff. So 
I'm gonna go over quickly the products that we're going to be using today. We're gonna be using the French horn die, and we're just going to be using that little bow right there. Bent branches, and this is just going to be a little accent, so that one's always fun. Our background is going to be the quatrefoil cover plate, and what I did was I used the embossing paste, exact same technique as I showed you in the first part of the video, I inked it up with Catherine Pooler eucalyptus ink, which you can see here. I don't want to take the whole thing apart because I don't have to like place everything again. Then we have the traditional bell die set. We have the fresh cut pine die set. Christmas blessings, and we're going to be using that Merry Christmas right there. And then we're using the sentiment strips, and you're, we're going to be using the smallest one and then the middle of the road. A couple extra things that we're going to be using, I used, as you can probably see on this card, I used some Perfect Pearls Mist in the color Sunflower Sparkle. Now, this is by Ranger, but you can't buy it anymore. You can get the Perfect Pearls powder and mix it with water, create the mist, but they don't sell the mist anymore. So if you have some of this that you haven't used in a little while, this is your perfect chance, but it does, it does not, you aren't able to buy it anymore. And then we're also going to use this Lawn Fawn glue tube to glue everything. Shout out to my friends at Lawn Fawn, they're awesome. Now we're gonna put the card together, very simple very easy um i'm gonna just put this card together we're gonna go in slow or i'm gonna speed it up um because it's not that big of a deal you guys know how to put cards together but i'm using ugh, the lawn fawn glue because i'm honestly not completely sure that a normal dot runner or strip runner adhesive is going to stick onto what you've embossed so it's always just like a good tip to just use some liquid glue. Even though it might get a little bit messy, it's definitely worth it. So here's our card. As you can see, the glue is still drying, but I will have a photo, a couple photos inserted after the glue dries so that, sorry, so that you guys are able to see what it looks like. So this is just a really, really simple, really nice little Christmas card that you can send out. If you're mass producing, it might be a good idea because it's just a few different elements. And so that's that's that so i hope you guys enjoyed this i will see you guys next time bye